All right, welcome to today's video, uh, where we'll be solving an actual problem from a GRE subject test practice test. It's number 37 on the current ETS practice test. Uh, this problem was solved correctly by only 25% of test takers when it appeared on the GRE, so this is a really good one to go over. And as always, I'm Mohamed Omar. I'm a professor in the math department at Harvey Mudd College. Okay, so the problem states that we have a finite dimensional real vector space V, and P is a linear transformation of V whose square is itself, right? And we need to determine which of the following must be true. P is invertible, P is diagonalizable, or P is either the identity transformation or the zero transformation. Now we can construct many linear transformations by looking at their matrices instead. Um, so you have a matrix whose square is itself. If you force it to be diagonal, then the diagonal entries will be 0 or 1, right? And so we can try matrices whose diagonal entries are a random assortment of zeros and ones. If we take a look at the example right here, right, this eliminates answer choices 1 and 3 off the bat. So the quick example that we had of a linear transformation that ruled out choices 1 and 3 reduced our answer choices down to only possibly being C or E. And so now this is a perfect time to guess, given that there's no consequence for guessing, and we're only down to two answers. Right? Regardless, we're still going to give, give a complete answer here and show why P, in fact, has to be diagonalizable. All right, so first notice, if you pick an element of the range of P and apply P to that vector, you're going to get 1 times that vector. So any non-zero vector in the range is going to actually be an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. And for all linear transformations, any non-zero vector in the kernel is going to be an eigenvector with eigenvalue 0. So both the range and the kernel of this linear transformation are eigenspaces. But more interestingly, any vector can be written as a sum of something in the range and the kernel, as we see here. And at the same time, if a vector is in the range and the kernel, it has to actually be the zero vector. Right? If something like a vector w is in the range, is pv. Right? But that's actually p squared v, which is p times w, which is 0. So the previous slide showed us that any vector is a sum of something in the range and the kernel, and these two subspaces, the range and the kernel, intersect trivially. So v has to actually be the direct sum of the range and the kernel. And so if we take a basis for the range, which we showed was an eigenspace, and a basis for the kernel, which we showed was an eigenspace, Union those two together, we'll get a basis for V, which means V has a basis of eigenvectors. So because V has a basis of eigenvectors, P is actually a diagonalizable linear transformation. There's another way we could have seen this if we know a little bit more linear algebra. If P squared is P, then P is a root of the polynomial X times X minus 1. And so the minimal polynomial of P has to actually divide this polynomial given. Since it splits into linear factors, this means that P has to be diagonalizable. Thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, please click the like button below. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel.